Hello, my name is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, as you can hear, <laughs> my voice is still not a hundred percent, but it is definitely better than it was last week and the week before where I could not speak at all. So thank you for your continued prayers. They are appreciated. Now today, you see how I have on my beautiful sparkly Be When Simply Sisters t-shirt. Be When, that stands for Business Women Inspirational Network. Apostle Mary Pitts, if you're watching, I love you dearly, you know that. Um, I was a part of Be When for I think about 10 years, um, as well as being on the board as well. Um, awesome, awesome time of my life. So we're going to be talking about sisterhood. One of the dear sisters in this group came up with this, this term, simply sisters. That's who we were. That's who we are. Simply sisters. So y'all know. I'm going to tell myself, y'all know I'm going to be very transparent today. So we're going to be talking about real sisters, fake sisters. And when I say sisters, talking about blood and non-blood people, okay? So I'm just going to jump into the scripture and then we're going to get right into this message. Because how many of you guys, you had real sisters, real brothers, sorry brothers. Okay, I'm not a chick, I don't have any brother shirts, okay? How many of you guys, you've, you had real friends? Hmm, before you ended up in a toxic relationship with a narcissist. And either during the time that you were with this narcissist, married, dating, whatever, or after you escaped, praise God like me, you you probably lost some friends. Some friends that you thought were sisters, some friends that, you know, you thought would believe you and not the pathological liar, okay? But when, hmm, but when they did that smear campaign, it worked. Just like the love bombing worked on you, just like the Hoover worked on you, your campaign worked on your supposed sisters, okay, or brothers. So we're going to be talking about that today. So I'm going to be in Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 46 through 50. This section of scripture, according to my KJV Bible, is entitled, Jesus' True Family true family you know i don't know jesus had brothers and sisters right like biological brothers and sisters from his mom y'all know that right okay he's talking about his true family sorry i know some of you guys stand on that blood is thicker than water and family over everything I some of you guys, the, the narcissists are in your family and you've been hurt by them, by your family, by your own DNA, more than you've been hurt by strangers on the street. So let's, let's find out who our true family is today. Okay. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren, biological, stood without desiring to speak with him, Jesus. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, Jesus, it's in red, who is my mother? And who are my brethren? Jesus asked him this question. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples not toward his blood relatives, toward his disciples and said, Behold, 
my mother and my brethren. Let's talk about his disciples. For whosoever, whosoever, shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my mother, my brother, and sister, and mother. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. The people that do the will of God, that's who he said, that, that's, that's my mother, my brother, my sisters, these people. Yes, I know my real mother and my real brothers and sisters are standing outside, but I'm chatting with these people. These are my, my true, I didn't write this, Jesus' true family, okay? So especially, mm -mm, especially for us, us, uses who have narcissistic people in our families, who were born and raised in narcissistic households. Remember, my daddy, dear old dad, was a narcissist. But I had no idea until God told me, remember the day of the home movies on my beautiful Chase Lounge? I'm crying like, my who is a what? What, Lord, what? So again, we've been conditioned. If we're raising those narcissistic families, we've been conditioned to not be loved properly. Been conditioned to be, you know, gaslit and manipulated. And again, that's how we, most of us ended up in narcissistic relationships okay so you guys know um i do not talk right this second to my biological sister i have one sister i don't talk to her right now hmm. Hmm. so many reasons why hmm. now that does not mean that oh i'm harboring unforgiveness in my heart and that's your sister you need to talk to your sister bubba I know who my true family is, okay? Don't blame me. So, no, there's no unforgiveness. There's no nothing. If she, God forbid she needs a kidney, I'll give it to her. Because I'm her sister, okay? She probably didn't do that to me, but whatever. It's a whole other video. Okay? But, okay, so because of that now, <laughs> almost half a century old, now I know that because I was never, when I say never, y'all, I already told you the story never been close to my sister because of that now i know that's why i like clung clung to a lot of women that were my sisters even brothers that i called my brother in christ i don't think i have any brothers in christ anymore which is that because i used to have a to be very close to a lot of guys that I considered my brother in Christ. And I have to tell you, all of my ex-friends, all of my ex-brothers and sisters, they were all Christian. And now, I don't mean just Christian with a label. I mean church-going licensed ministers, ordained clergy people. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about like the witches who go to church every Sunday pretending to whatever. Real, real men and women of God. Those are my ex-friends. That's it. That's it. Okay. So, but I know now that because I was not close to my biological sister, I wanted that sisterhood wanted that so bad that I just said you're my friend so you're my sister you're my friend so you're my sister you're my friend so you're my brother and and I was I and I, again I'll tell myself I was genuine genuinely sister you know to my friends loyalist loyal loyal loyalist friend on the planet. I don't mind telling you that. I'm not joking. 
Let me real quick tell y'all who I am. A friend of mine who uh, was dating this one dude and he broke her heart and broke her heart so much that I ended up in the bathroom. We used to work together. I ended up in the bathroom of our place of employment crying because this dude hurt her. And so this guy, I'm not going to mention what country he's from. So, but because this man from this particular country nation hurt my friend, I no longer eat food from that country. Do you hear me? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm like, oh, no, I can't have that sandwich because it has the name <laughs> of the nation where this dude was from that hurt my friend. That's how loyal I am. Ask my friend. Okay, that's how loyal I am. I'm very serious about that. And so I, I give myself away. Remember, we're supposed to be giving ourselves away to God. I give myself away to my friends. What What do you need? You need prayer? Sure, I'll stay on the phone with you for five hours and, and pray you through this situation. Sure, I'll listen to you. Sure, I'll get left. Yeah, you, where are you going? My friends, I'm down for whatever. What What you doing for your birthday, girl? You know I'm down for whatever. Where you want to ride to? Where you want to fly to? Where you want to drive to, hopped on a plane and gone to other countries with my friends. Do you hear? Hmm. Looking for that true family, okay? So I have some, talk about the good friends and talk about the real friends, because there's friends. And then there's foes. We have people that are on our side and we have people that are against us. There's a saying, oh gosh, that talks about, you know, like the, it, who, who betrayed Jesus? He said, I chose all 12 of you and one of you is a devil. J Jesus said that. He chose Judas to be one of his 12 disciples, but he already knew it was a devil. He already knew he was going to betray him. With a kiss. How many of you guys have been kissed <laughs> by your foe? Kissed by your enemy? I know, I know I have it. Hugged by your enemy. Okay? Okay. So, let's talk about the, the friends, the real friends. Uh, uh, one of my close friends, when I moved from Rhode Island down to Florida, I think I told you guys, I had a friend who lived in Florida. She flew, got on a plane and flew up to Rhode Island to help me drive that U-Haul. Remember I told 30 hours, I think I told y'all? In the snow, and the sleet, the rain, the ice. Remember it was January of 2003. It was freezing, it was winter. She flew from another state to help me drive through a bunch of states. Okay, that's a true family. Okay, known her almost 30 years now, all right. And there were times where, you know, there was a section of my life where, you know, God has to prune you. Um, one of my cousins that I literally met on Ancestry.com, a first cousin, I think I told y'all. She, 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 she's a writer, just like me, it's in our DNA. Um, she wrote a poem called Pruned to bloom sometimes god is like let me get rid of susie and billy and mary and johnny because i you're about to bloom and i need you to be free to, to spread your wings and fly okay when that caterpillar you know is in a little cocoon and it's being transformed into a beautiful butterfly it there's not room for two caterpillars in that little pupa, whatever it's called. Y'all scientists let me know in the comments what it's called. There is not room for two or three or four of them. They have their own so they can transform. Being with a narcissist that you will be transformed. When you escape, like you should, at some point, 
you're going to be a completely different person. Oh my God, I keep saying about myself. So there are periods of time where God's like, bam, let me separate you guys. Let me separate you guys. Let me separate you guys. So he did that to me, to a couple, with a couple of people. Those are the people that are still in my life today. The people that I didn't talk to for five years, for seven, eight years. And God just went, boop. He's done that more than once, people. Don't be afraid to lose a real friend. If that person is your true family, they'll come back to you. God will restore that. If they're a foe, then yeah, they'll, they'll be gone forever. You know, that, that saying that people are in your lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Some people have to go. When, they, when it's time for them to go, just let them go. Let them go. Let the foe go. Let the friend go. Because a friend, the real friend, your true family, God will, will, will bring you back together. God has done that to me a couple of times. And so, now this particular friend, we lit we did not see each other for like five years because that's when i was you know get, getting out of religion into relationship and i'm like uh -huh. yeah i can't I, I can't drink anymore i can't fornicate anymore i can't cuss anymore so i let me i gotta go over here because I, I have and i told god i said lord if you want me to be different you're gonna have to give me a whole new set of friends because I'm still on that city walk, partying, you know, partying, partying, partying day and night. It wasn't working day and night. Like Michael Jackson said, I was partying day and night, okay? And so God did that. He's like, oh, you need whole new friends? Bam. Here's a whole new set of friends. <laughs> Be ye transformed. <laughs> Be ye holy, even as I am holy. And he did that. And so I, I was immature immature in the faith, immature as a human being, even though I'm almost 30 or 30 years old. And so I didn't, I didn't know how to make that transition smoothly. So it just kind of, it was a rough separation between me and this particular beautiful sister. It was just like a, I, I, I can't be friends anymore with you. Bye. And, um, and God brought us together. My mother is a breast cancer survivor. So every year I would go to the breast cancer walk in um, in Florida. Big, huge, gigantic event. Thousands and thousands and tens and thousands of people, right? I'm walking. La, 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 5K walk. Walking, not running. Walking. And I hear behind me one day. Charlene and I turn around there's my friend I literally I hadn't seen her in five years and we lived 10 minutes apart like turn this way turn this way turn that way 10 minutes apart we didn't see each other in the same city in the same area almost five years and God's like, oh yeah, you're 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 still true family. You're, you're simply sisters. So I'm gonna bring you guys back together. And then when I say tens of thousands of people, how did that happen? How did she see me from behind? How did she see me? How did she recognize me? How did she? Don't worry about letting go of people that you know are your friends um definitely don't be afraid of letting go of those you know those frenemies those people that you think are friends but they're actually foes it's god will reveal it but again god brought us back together and that was it <laughs> we've been close we just picked up where we left off so what's up how are the kids blah 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 there was no you did this and you did that and i'm mad at you and blah. There, were, there was none of that. It was like a clean slate. God did that to me with another friend. 
I'm super duper close with in college. We used to go, we were so close, like I was at her house every month, like me and my daughter, like sleeping in her bed. Okay, just, you know, um, when I lived in Rhode Island, go down to New York, and just, again, literally just a party. Okay, looking for my husband <laughs> at the club. Didn't find him there. Um, so super duper close travel you know again driving from new york down to south carolina flying to atlanta to close true family and one literally one day just like friendship was just over there was no no reason no fighting no cussing no nothing no words it was just like no more communication on both of our ends. I'm not blaming nobody for nothing. Everything is a two-way street relationships. It takes two people to make every relationship work. Friendship, marriage, business, everything. All right? Just stop talking. That was God. Because God knew. Because I'm still in Rhode Island at this point. God knew I needed to be here in Florida. If I was still close with that beautiful soul, who's still my simply sister today, my true family. If I was still, you know, if we never lost contact, I probably would have moved to New York. I love New York. Start spread the news. I love New York. I haven't been back up there. So I've been down here, which is a shame, but I'm going back. Come on back, New York. I love New York. New York, New York. Um... But I would have ended up living in New York. I love New York. I don't love the traffic in New York. I take it. Yeah, no point in driving. But I love New York, okay? And I love my friend. Loved her, her, her family. Um, yeah, I wasn't supposed to move to New York. I was supposed to move to Florida. So God just went, boop, for a season. And when I say you. Yeah, you, like she got married, had a kid and all that. I got married a couple more times. And I, I had to move here. God knew, okay, these chicks are like this. Charlene's not leaving the Northeast to come to the Southeast. I have to separate them for a season. We started talking again at a other friend's wedding. Mutual friend that we again, went to college with. So know these people again, almost 30 years. Okay. We met, picked her up from the airport. I got there first. Then me and my other friend, we picked her up from the airport. Hey girl, how you been? Blah, 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 blah. Child, you looking good. How's your daughter? Blah, blah. No animosity, no arguing, no you did this and how come that we ended up in the same hotel room. Room. Do you hear me? We hadn't seen each hadn't seen each other, hadn't talked to each other in years. And because our other friend got married, we're in the hotel room, child up, stayed up all night talking for two days straight. True family. Then hmm, here's the foes. The frenemies, the people I thought were simply sister. I, I thought they were my simply sister. But again, I, I'm giving everything to all of my relationships and, 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 until it's just like, bam, and it's over. Um, I have this thing, again, because I was raised in this narcissistic family. And because my mother was, you know, just, she wasn't raised to be emotionally connected. So we're not emotionally co connected, like I told you guys before. Love my mother, do anything for her, okay? But we're just not emotionally connected. So because of that, I told y'all, I'm taking courses, <laughs> being in the right communities, being in, you know, just that, under that corporate anointing, so I'm learning again, still learning, healing, healing is a journey. Learning about myself, learning about my attachment style. Mm. Let me 
you guys heard volumes. It's secure attachment, avoidant, and anxious, I think. Psychologists, comment below. So I believe I have like a, a dual attachment style, secure and avoidant. <laughs> avoidant is kind of like, I can be over here and you can be over there. Bye. Um, because I, I'm secure, I will attach with you securely, man, loyally. I'm down for whatever. Ride and ride. I'm not dying, but I'm riding for you. All right, wherever you want to go, I'll ride with you. So I attach securely. However, once I see once the <laughs> once the scales fall from my eyes, once the veil is torn, twain from top to bottom, bottom to top, you know, Bible scholars let me know. It's, it's ripped, okay? The veil. And I can see the real person. Done. I'm Audi 5000, okay? That's the avoidance. That's the, bye, click. It's literally like a, a light switch. Oh, you're really like this. <laughs> like, you are now an ex friend. And I, I don't think I've ever cried losing anybody. Which again can be perceived in a positive way or a negative way. But I haven't. I'm just like, oh, it's over, it's over, bye. Oh, it's over, it's over, bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Shaquana. And I go on about my business like, thank you, Lord, for revealing the truth. And, that, and that's it. And there's no looking back. There's no turning back. Because if I see, <laughs> I remember again, the wolves in sheep clothing. Once I see you're a wolf, I'm done. I can't. I can't unsee that. I can't unhear that. But it, in the interim, while I'm with you, I'm, I'm securely attached because I'm looking for that sister. I'm looking for that true family that I didn't have. I've been adopted <laughs> into so many people's families. I've been at. Literally, Paul, at least I've been to at least seven family reunions. Not for my own family, for my friends' families. I've been at their family cookout and their family Thanksgiving and their family Christmas. Because I'm I told y'all that's why I still hung on to number two, Mr. PK, for so long, even after the divorce, because I was like, this is my family. I, I, I love his daughters, and I love his parents, and I love his siblings, and I love, and I, I didn't want to let that go. But Lord, this, this is my family. I, I don't have a family. This is my family. <laughs> you got to be healed. We have to heal that because it's my inner child. It's little baby Charlene. <laughs> That's still looking for a sister, a mother, a father, a brother. She's still looking for that. So, you know, being close with these people, I've I've been so close. I say close. I have close friends. I don't just have, you know, I know a lot of people that are just acquaintances, but if I call you my friend, I call you my sister, then we're like this. We're not just like, oh, no, we're like this, okay? And we don't have to talk every day. I'm not a talker. I'm not, you know, we're not, I'm not just chit chatting on the phone. I'm not, I'm not a chit chatter. If we're talking, it's because, okay, you know, there's really only one friend, honestly, that I talk to, talk to like set aside you set aside time make an appointment calendar appointment and like okay we're gonna talk for three hours on friday at you know, 5 p.m you know um everybody else at text oh, i'll see you in person you know when i'm in town blah blah it's fine 
fine. I'm straight with them. They don't have time to be just chit-chatting about the weather. I know. Sorry. And so I've been, been so close with people, again, brothers and sisters in Christ, that I've gone after the relationship has been over. I've gone out places without these people. And so people have seen, they're used to, the world has been used to seeing me with Susie Q. And the world has been used to seeing me with Brother Leroy. So, I, oh, hey, Charlene, where's so-and-so? I don't know. We don't talk anymore. Hey, Charlene, where's so-and-so? I don't know. We don't talk no more. You know how many times did I just say that? <laughs> you know how many times? Because we were securely attached. And I, they were my true family. At least on my end. And it's just been like little things. Some relationships are over and I have no idea why. I don't know why brother Leroy doesn't talk to me anymore. I don't know why sister Shaquana don't talk to me anymore. I have no idea. But again, I'm not crying over there. Sorry. I'm not. Because I, I, just, I just, I'm all about not crying over spilt milk. I really, really am. And and it's because I trust God so much. I'm just going to use that excuse. I trust God so much. So I'm like, oh, it's over. It must have been meant to be over. Next. Oh, it's over. Susie Q's not called me anymore. Hmm. I don't know why. Oh, well, it's over. Next. And I'm just like, Lord, I trust you. You, I, you know. You know why. I don't know why. You know why. You know, there's scripture that I stand on. Don't ask me where it's at. Somewhere in Psalm. It says, you know, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. Because they love God's word, his law, his statutes. I try to live by that. So, you know, Jesus said offenses will come. They, they're going to come. It's like you're going to have trials in this world. You will have tribulation. You will have trials. You will have opposition. Offenses are going to come. You don't have to hold on to them and take them and, you know, like I said, hold, hold that pain deep in your heart. You don't have to. So if, if I've offended anybody, you can tell me in the comments. You can DM me. I don't care. Y'all all still got my number. I've not changed my number. I don't even block certain people. I don't block. Certain people I don't block. I'm like, I, 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 don't, I have nothing against you. If you have something against me, tell me. Be a man, be a woman of God and come and talk. Come and talk to me. Come talk to me. I'm straight. I'm grown. I can handle it if you say, yo, you hurt me, you know, it, April 15th in 1935. I, all I can say is, I am so sorry. I had no idea. Please forgive me. That's all I can say. I, I'm not, I'm not a cup of chip. I always tell people, uh, if you offend me or upset me at 501, by 502, you're going to know. Because I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to cuss you out. But I'm going to tell uh, Excuse me, at 501, you said X, Y, and Z. That hurt me. 501, you did X, Y, and Z. That upset me. I'm going to tell you. I'm not supposed to do that. And also confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another. That be healed let's be healed i told you i'm pouring into myself investing in myself getting into these new communities literally just 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 so you know god's word can be fulfilled in my life and i can get that greater wisdom and knowledge and understanding that i just i i haven't gotten my entire life like the taxes business everything inner healing, deliverance. To, okay, we, we, we need to be that avid learner, that lifelong learner, okay? 
And so I'm getting into these communities and, and just and just learning about more about sisterhood and more about community, that that true family that holds you accountable, that says, Hey, sis, I see you going down the long road. Um I see be you, sister. Mendy Mahogany, please check out her channel. Straight wisdom. Just straight wisdom. Mandy Mahogany and she posted about friendship and just like hey y'all need to you know if I'm doing something wrong please tell me if you my friend if you my sister please tell me please because I just like I tell God if I'm going down Smith Street but I need to turn on Johnson Street please Lord don't let me keep going down Smith Street Talk to my GPS and say rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. Make a U-turn. Go you need to make a right on Johnson Street. We need people in our lives like that. We don't need yes men. If you're you have a business, you're the CEO, president of the board of directors, executive director. You're not supposed to have a bunch of yes men around you. I've seen that in the church. You're not supposed to have a bunch of yes men around you. There's supposed to be somebody that says, uh. Like, name them one of my books. That's not God. There's somebody is supposed to be around you to say that. So the people that have fallen, you know, out of my life. That are now labeled as ex-friends. Paul said, I consider all that my past. Consider it as dung. Like, it's over. Um, if I see these people on the street. Hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, bro, how you doing? I'm, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm not going to be like, girl, how come this? And brother, how come that? <laughs> we don't have time for that, people. Jesus is coming back soon. <laughs> Rarely. Because the world is getting out of control. So, yeah, we don't have time to be acting crazy and not crazy. Um, I have another super duper close friend. And it was a, you know, separation. Um, but right before she passed away, I was able to talk to her. And I was able to tell her, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm speaking life. And life more abundantly. I'm speaking healing. I don't care what the doctor says. I, I'm, I speak life until it life is gone. Okay? That's just that's just how I pray. I'm just believing God until God says, no, I got to take this person. Or, you know, it's just that person's time. But I'm, I'm so glad I got that opportunity. Because, again, if I had seen her on the street, I would have been straight. That... And that's why we have to stop taking offense. If I've offended you, please, again, please tell me. To, don't go to your grave or don't let me go to mine. And you mad. Because guess what? I'm not mad at anybody. None of my ex-Christian friends. I'm not mad at them. I just know that their season, their time in my life is over. So when God says, this is your real friend, this is your true family, hold on to that person, love that person, pray for that person. Hmm. But then when he says, this person is actually your foe, they're actually trying to hinder your purpose. They're actually trying to distract your purpose. They're actually using you. Go, Mr. and Mrs. Foe. Go. I'm going to hold on to my friends. I'm going to hold on to my true family. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys once again for watching this video. For liking and sharing this video. Thank you for being on my channel. For subscribing to my channel. And for hitting that notification bell on my channel. Again, I really do love you guys. And I pray that this message was 
life giving to you was you know time for self-assessment i've been doing a lot of self-assessment mind set changes renewing of my mind and spirit and it's just something that we have to do as a body of christ again if you have any questions or comments prayer requests take up sword.com all my social media links are in the channel description you guys be blessed and you be safe